let me just pull this up. Um, Jim, occasionally I'll, I'll do a sound check with you. Okay. Since you're my, you're my go-to person there on the, uh, on the video. All right. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, I'm excited to be able to help you make your company a little bit more visible to the federal buyers. This is a really important topic to me. I've been a um, government contractor for a long time and no one really drove this point home to me. So I didn't know about it until I left my fourth company and sold my, my fourth company. So um, part of what I'm trying to do is to take those lessons learned and share them back. But um, today we're going to drive into your dynamic small business search profile and how that impacts your visibility. I wanted to, uh, and Matt, I'm going to unmute you in a second here, but I wanted to uh, have Matt Burkett out of Crane, Indiana, and I just got to find you in a second, um, introduce himself and introduce Crane because uh, we're doing this together, uh, Crane and the GovCon Chamber, to be able to uh, get this information to everybody. I'm kind of buying time here as I'm trying to, oh, uh, Cecilia, are you able to unmute Matt? His, his phone number is the uh, 812 number. Hey, Neil. Oh, there you go. Good. I can hear you. Okay. So, um, Matt, I don't know if you, if you got the deck in front of you, but the slide I have up yeah. is your contact information, but go ahead and give us a, a, a hello. Yeah. Hey, hey, hello. Uh, this is Matt uh, Burkett. I'm the deputy for small business at uh, NSWC Crane and, um, you know, just wanted to thank Neil um, for hosting, um, you know, hosting today's webinar. Um, you know, and, and again, you know, thanks to all the businesses um, who uh, who have decided to join us today. Um, cause I know Neil's got a lot of good information to share um, regarding the importance of your DSPS registration. And, and uh, Matt, I, I say this uh, all the time about how DSPS is an important tool for the government, but... Can you talk a little bit about the process you you go through? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, DSBS is a tool that um, you know that we here at Crane and and all throughout the government that that we use. I mean, it's used by our buyers. It's used by our, as I call them, the requirements personnel um, to um, to try to locate, um, especially small business vendors um, who can support us um, on our various procurements um, that we have. Um, you know, at Crane, we do we do thousands. Of procurements a year. Um, those range from, um, you know, hundred dollar buys um, that are paid via credit card all the way up to multi million dollar, um, you know, um, weapon systems. But we use, but the but the same thing applies. We it all goes back to to DSBS. So, you know, one thing that we try to encourage, uh, you know, when I'm out, you know, trying to you know talk to businesses is encourage them to make it easy. Um, make it easy for us because, like I said, we have thousands of procurements that we process in a year, so we don't have a lot of time to kind of scour the market and and look for every small business that might be out there. We're going to go to one place like DSBS and and try to be as um, efficient as we can in our market research. So, so you know, making it easy for the government, making it easier for the buyers, for the requirements personnel to find you, and then. You know, being you know concise and you know describing what you do um, that makes our life as you know buyers uh, much much easier to where we can get in contact with you and you can have that opportunity um, to bid. No, that's perfect. Thanks, Matt. And and I didn't um, introduce Matt properly. He's the uh, Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane. Indiana's deputy director for small business. So when you think about many of the opportunities that are out there, you're often going through Matt to find uh, the answers that you're looking for, whether it's program office or acquisition side, uh, he's the person who can help us both be prepared coming in to talk to Crane and then navigating um, Crane or even other parts of the Navy if um, that's what we're looking for. So I appreciate that. You can find um, information on the slide. I'm, I'm reading this out a little bit because some people are dialing in and not seeing the slides. Um, but you can learn more about uh, um, Crane and Matt um, on the slide handouts that we have. And after this event, feel free to reach back out to me and I can send you this information. But um, you can also find Matt. He's active on LinkedIn. So uh, Matt, M-A-T-T, Burkett, B-U-R-K-E-T-T. -T. And we'll come back to that more at the end. Um, 
Okay, so in this webinar, we're going to cover pretty fast the market research uh, and what Matt was just leading us into about how the federal buyer researches small businesses when they're trying to grow the industrial base or find unique uh, services and needs or fill unique services and needs. Um, and so we'll talk about the process there. Then we get into the meat of this webinar, which is the Dynamic Small Business Search Tool or DSBS. And inside of DSBS, um, we each have a profile that's made up of our SAM.gov and the SBA small business profile, they, they together make up the dynamic small business search tool. And then the last one we're going to talk about in this webinar is uh, what needs to be done. And this is why I grabbed a lot of your guys' DUNS numbers. I'm going to show you conceptually with a sample, but if I can get in and actually show you what you need to do on your own profile, um, we'll do that. And I'll give you specific suggestions for improvement. Quick introduction to me. I've mentioned this already. I think that I've been a small business owner for 20 years since I got out of the army. And um, really as I moved forward, a big area that I've seen that is missing that I'm trying to fill is helping out on the process. I, I like to say this all the time, that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. And for 20 years, there was a lot of the process I didn't understand um, that if I understood better, I could have grown a $50 million company. Um, instead of the, you know, still good size company I had. But if I had understood the process better, then I would have been far more successful. And so now as I move forward, I want to share those tips with you. If I can bring experts from the government like um, Matt and other people, then I will. In fact, I'll, I forgot to mention, but you can find this on our website at www.govconchamber.com. Um, we do uh, podcast interviews and Matt was one of our guests and he talks about Crane, he talks about the Navy, and most importantly, provides some tips on how to succeed. So once you're visible, you, you want to make sure you go back and listen to his podcast and the other podcast guests um, for some good tips. Anyways, one of the things that, um, that I've seen on the process, though, is the dynamic small business search tool. When I, uh, when I go back and look at my old companies, they're just completely empty. And I figured out the reason. It's because when we start a company, generally, it's the owner of the company who goes in and creates a SAM.gov profile. And in that profile, it has required fields and fields that are not required. So we blow through the required fields, boom, we're registered and we're feeling good about ourselves and we move on to the next thing. I got that SAM registration out of the way. The problem is no one really tells us how powerful the SAM profile is and an extension, the dynamic small business search profile is to our marketing as we move forward. They tell us farther along, but at that very point, if it was up to me, I would make keywords required, like all, all of them. Um, because when we learn the why, we really push forward. So for me, that's what I try to do is to share this information out there. If I can ever be of help to you, just reach out to me through LinkedIn and ask me a question. Um, so let's get into understanding how market research works as it relates to the dynamic small business search tool in particular. In the federal government, there's roughly 300,000 active small businesses in SAM right now. If you went into SAM.gov or DSBS, you'll see about 300,000 firms in there. Um, and these are some rough numbers, right? Roughly 30,000 new businesses come into this funnel. And so what the federal buyer has to do is to basically shortlist all of us small businesses down into a good group of potentially qualified firms that they can then do market research um, with to identify vendors that could solve the needs and, and the help with the mission that the Navy has in this case, for example. Um, and this is across all the federal government. So the first thing that uh, they do is look at all the small businesses, that 300,000. And the way they filter it down is just like Google, they type in some keywords. And let's use SharePoint as an example. When they type in SharePoint, they get back a list of companies that um, say that they do SharePoint in, somewhere in their profile in a keyword. And those profiles, those results that they get, get back are um, then delivered to the market researcher in a table. And the table has this column for capability narratives, which is basically your elevator pitch. It's a small um, paragraph that you write that tells the viewer or the market researcher what your company does. And the reason this is important is if they're searching for SharePoint and then they get the results back and you have a capability narrative that is um, describing, let's say, construction, then it doesn't seem right. They're looking for an IT company that could do Microsoft SharePoint development. 
And the reason you might have SharePoint in there is because uh, you ran a construction project and updated SharePoint on a regular basis, right? So it's fine that you had the word in there, but it's not relevant to the market researcher. So they use that capability narrative to, to um, continue to shortlist the group of results that they have. The next thing they do is they look at your experience in, in the dynamic small business search tool in the form. It's at the very bottom. It's experience slash past performance. And it doesn't matter whether it's commercial or state and local or federal. What they're looking for is if they're saying, I want to find SharePoint companies, down below they want to see that you have experience in it. The riskier the project, the more they might want to have federal experience. Even more riskier, you know, Matt might require it be Navy federal experience. You know, they'll get into that. But the first thing they look for is, do you have experience? And you're going to see some surprising stats in a second on that. And the last thing they look at is your website. Hey, I like these companies. I've got um, a group of uh, companies that I'm going to shortlist. And they look at your website URL. The idea is they want to click on your website URL and go to your website. Do a little more research. See what you write out there. Um, you know, a lot of times if you don't have a website, you don't seem legitimate to a government buyer as a potential prime vendor. You can certainly subcontract, but the reality is the government's constantly balancing this, um, this risk that they have with awarding contracts to firms. Will they be able to do the work that they need, not just to manage the money correctly, but because we're all supporting the Navy's mission or DHS's mission, et cetera. So they need us to be able to do the work correctly. And so they manage that risk. And part of the way they evaluate how risky you are is how mature looking you are, how experienced you are, and that's where your past performances come in. And then little subliminal things are like, if you don't have a website, eh, how mature could this company be? I don't wanna argue whether that's true or not because it doesn't matter, perception is reality. And if you don't have a website, then the perception is maybe you're not you know, quite ready for prime time, if you will. So let's take a look at Indiana because this is why we reached out to um, Indiana and uh, this is why Matt from Crane um, in Indiana at the Naval installation there is, is uh, teaming up with us to try to get this word out to you is when they saw the stats, even they were surprised at this. In Indiana, there's 3,800 businesses out there, right? 3,827 businesses. First thing the government buyer does is look for businesses through keyword searches. 60% of you, almost 60%, right? have no keywords at all. Six out of 10 of the people on this call right now have no keywords. That means you will not be found by the federal buyer. When the results come back, from a capability narrative standpoint, 72% of you have no capability narrative. And it just kind of keeps getting worse. 80% of you have no um, experience listed. And it doesn't mean you can't sell to the federal government, but when you think about shortlisting, if you were gonna shortlist a plumber for your house and they had some skills, but they did not list experience, you go, hey, you seem like a really nice person, but I'm gonna go with this other company that's got experience. Um, and you know what it's like. I mean, the, the federal buyers, uh, a lot of people say this, Judy Brad out there says this a lot about, um, you're not selling to the federal government, you're selling to Matt or John or Jane or uh, Tammy or something, right? You're selling to a person. And uh, the last thing you really want to keep in mind, 77% of Indiana firms, this is not national. Now, national numbers are, are actually higher than Indiana's, but 77% of the firms have no uh, website listed at all or the website that's in there is broken. And I'll show you what I mean uh, in, uh, by broken. But the thing to keep in mind here is these problems that I'm showing you are all uh, fixable, solvable. You can address them in an hour in a day, at most a week, if you're um, you know, really meticulous, right? But it shouldn't take you long and it will cost you nothing to fix this. Only you can fix it. Um, and so what Matt and I are here today doing is saying, we're communicating the problem, we're giving the suggestion on how to fix it, and now it's up to you to uh, fix it. So let's talk about uh, really quickly why DSBS is important. And, I, and I've alluded to this, but um, I really wanna point this out. Um, it's about getting found, right? when you think about how you might reach out to your, uh, your buyers, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, proactively, knock it on doors and trying to get in and sell something. And um, reactively, they're contacting you and saying, hey, I'm interested in um, construction or paving or, or IT software development. Can you, can you help us with it? We'd like to just talk with you about it. So you want to get found. And when you have passive tools out there like LinkedIn or your website, 
your capability statement that you pass out at events, the dynamic small business search, et cetera. They all help the federal government buyers find you. Those buyers are the program office people, the um, small business professionals within a, an organization, an agency, and then the acquisition staff, like the contracting officers, contracting specialists. These people are reaching out, trying to do their job on market research. And your job is to make sure you're holding your hand up. And in this case, you hold your hand up through DSBS to say, hey, I'd like to be found. Um, but it's not just them. It's also uh, other government contractors, both small businesses and large primes. When a large prime goes out and I'm looking for a woman-owned business that can do um, HVAC or uh, sheetrock work with us or something, or cybersecurity, when they're looking for those kind of quals, they come into DSBS and they're able to use this tool. When I started my fifth company, which I closed to just run GovCon Chamber full-time, it was a SharePoint, Microsoft SharePoint uh, company. First thing I did is went into DSBS and I found 71 other companies that did SharePoint just like me and I reached out to them, right? So teaming partners have the ability to use DSBS to find what we call competitors, right? They're kind of competitors and they're kind of teammates. One day you're competing, one day you're working together. Um, that's competitors. And, and if you realize helping each other, uh, you can grow, then understanding DSBS's importance is easier because you uh, get found by them as well. Oh, so one last, this quote here, I put a post out, I can't remember what day I did, but within the last 30, 45 days, uh, because I do a lot of this. And I put this uh, post out about the dynamic small business uh, search tool, how important it is to the federal buyers, et cetera. And within an hour, this director of small business programs from the Navy, somebody uh, Matt knows in, in higher up or higher level command, but uh, this person came back and said, the government is using this site. It's one of the first places I look when conducting market research. Uh, I say this all the time. What makes me an expert is I listen to people like Matt and his peers around the federal government, and I regurgitate it out in a way that, you know, us smalls will hear. And sometimes that means regurgitating it out over and over and over again until, uh, until we do it. But so anyways, it, this quote here could have come from any different agency. They're all like that. Um, they all see and use the value of uh, DSBS. Okay, so I'm about to go through now a dynamic small business search profile example. And let me just track my time to see how I'm doing. I'm doing really good. Um, the, uh, so the, the analysis I'm, that I'm going to go through here is I'm trying to do it through an average or typical market researcher's eyes. Um, they're going to come in, use this tool, there's certain things that are glaring. For example, if you have no keywords, that's not a subliminal flag. That's a, that's a red flag, right? It's, you're out of the game. Um, but there are some subliminal ones I'm going to talk to you about. An example is um, your, the last time you updated your profile. If it hasn't been within the last six months, subliminally, and that's hard for me to say apparently, it, it begins to um, make me wonder whether this company is overly active. And if I've got 30 or 50 other companies that are qualified but have updated in the last six months, then I feel good about it. Now imagine if it's a year since you've updated. Now we have to update it every year, but um, you want to kind of update it every three to six months, but that's a subliminal flag. Um, it, it's not a something any market researcher would say, you know, flat out, this is why we don't do it. But you'll see some others and I'll talk about it. And then the last part is I'll go along and say, here's what needs to be fixed. Um, let me pause for a second and see if I can see, and Cecilia maybe you can help me, if there's any hands before I dive into the, the demo, um, any questions on what you're hearing so far? And I'm trying to figure out how I can see if you have a question. Okay, so I'm looking at the uh, participant list to see if anybody, you have the ability to raise a hand. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, for those of you who have dialed in, you don't, so you have to wait till the uh, few more minutes till I open it up. Okay, you can also use chat and then Cecilia can pop in and let me know. Um, and let me just check really quick on the chat. Just, uh, okay, um, everything, this is, wow, this is so great how many people put a Dunn's, <laughs> Dunn's number in there. Um, I'll stay on as long as anybody wants to stay on. I'll get, you know, Matt off on time, but um, we can continue after that. Okay, so let me go to the next slide here. Um, in this next slide, we're going through an actual profile. Uh, this is a, a 
um, DSBS friend of mine. He's, he's a person who's been on many of the webinars and uh, was okay with me using his profile as a really good example. I would encourage you, all of you, by the way, to let me use your profiles as example of before and after. Because imagine if somebody like, and I keep using Matt as the example as a small business professional who's online with us. Imagine if he um, uh, is watching my content and I put out something like Jim, uh, I'll shout out for Jim because he's, uh, uh, he's visible. Um, but imagine if I took Jim's profile and I, and I did a 90 second thing saying, hey, here's an old one and here's what it looks like now, refreshed. Well, Matt might engage in that content, see it, but now he's becoming aware very quickly of this person's company and what they have. Um, and it might be a company he never would have seen. Uh, so anyways, consider, consider letting me uh, share some of your content out there. We can talk about that off offline. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through uh, a DSBS analysis of this profile. First thing I mentioned was, um, uh, well, I said the date, but the first thing most importantly is it needs to be active. And there's a lot of that are out there that are expired. I have people selling actively to the government who don't realize their profiles are expired. Um, in, if Sam, your Sam profile is expired, they can't award you a contract. Um, so you want to just make sure that one basic thing. The next thing, as I said, every six months you want to upload your or update your profile. You should be adding experience. You should be rethinking your keywords. Um, you don't necessarily want to change your narrative of what you do, but you're learning every, every month you're learning. And so if you can update it, update it. The next one is the government's looking for a real phone number that they can look at and say, okay, if I reach out, I can reach somebody um, directly. Uh, I will tell you, if it says something like 557-1000, but does not have an extension after it, that's a subliminal tip to the, uh, um, to the market researcher that you might go into, I might go into Nowheresville and let me just move on to the next company. Um, the next thing is uh, Joe's name here. In your email address, this is another subliminal one, they wanna see a first and last name. It could be a first initial last name. What they don't wanna see is admin or info or contact because the fear for the market researcher is that if they send an email out to this company, it'll just go into oblivion and no one, answer, no one will answer it, so why should I bother sending an email? Um, make sure your email address is somebody who's monitoring that address on a regular basis. It should be a person in your company responsible for taking, um, uh, receiving contact from the federal buyer. So here's, uh, here's one of the first flags I can showcase um, that I was talking about with the sales funnel. And you remember, I said 77% of companies have no website or a broken website. And this one is incredibly ironic because uh, the website looks good, www, blah, blah, blah. The problem is uh, the way this tool works, if you click on it, it errors out because this tool requires that you have HTTP or HTTPS before the, um, the web site, excuse me. And so you need to go in, look at your profile and say, does mine have the actual full URL for our website? And if it doesn't come back in and put it in, it should not be broken like that. You should be able to click on it and it takes you right in, but I don't care. SBA and, and GSA's tool is broken. And until they fix it, it's our job to, you know, to work around that risk or that problem. Ironically, what I was saying is his next website below that, the e-commerce website actually has it correct with HTTPS. Um, okay, so let's go to the last one. Um, I'm skipping the rest because it's pretty straightforward. This next one is a subliminal one for me. Everybody should say, yes, we accept government cut, uh, cards. If you can't, or I mean, if you put no, the subliminal message you're communicating to the buyer is that uh, you're not ready for prime time. You know, you can't even accept a credit card. And everybody's got their reasons for why they can and they can't, and it doesn't matter. Just put yes, because first off, no one's gonna make you sell to the federal government. Uh, but if Matt um, comes from Crane and says, hey, I got a $3,000 purchase order, I would like one hour of your time to tell me your thoughts on the best way to position parking spaces. Well, you're gonna pay me $3,000? Yeah, but I need to do it on a credit card. Do you accept credit cards for $3,000 an hour? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take that money, right? And so just put yes. And nowadays it's so easy to accept credit cards. In the past, it might've been harder. So go ahead and put yes on that one. Going farther down your profile, 
You're going to look at uh, current principles. I recommend you put people in there. You don't want to hide. You're in business. You want to be visible. You're trying to brand your company, yourself. And so get your principles to be visible in here um, in the key leadership for some people is what they do. The next thing in, on the organization and ownership and certification section, the next thing is this non-federal government certification. In here is where you can put things like um, uh, state level certification. Some states have like environmental certifications you have to have or being able to do construction with them. Uh, other ones you can do like this person put in cybersecurity type certifications. It's a way to use those fields to pop attention. It's a kind of a freebie tip there. This one is where uh, the big, big part comes, right? They type in a keyword and if, if your profile comes up, the next thing they do is look at your capability narrative. Your capability narrative is the part that describes what your company does. You need to remember that the people reviewing your profile are not subject matter experts. And so there really doesn't need to be jargon in here. It needs to, from a high level, say what you could say at Thanksgiving dinner. And, you know, somebody says, what do you guys do? Oh, we do this, this, this. Oh, that makes sense. I heard of cybersecurity and blah, blah, blah. Um, some key things to keep out of here are don't say you're a hub zone or a woman-owned firm in your capability narrative. Most importantly, that information's higher up on your profile. So why waste real estate down here in the capability narrative? This capability narrative and the special equipment materials section are both keyword searching uh, or keyword indexed, meaning any word in there can be found. So if the market researcher is looking for networking, it's right here and they can find it. You wanna maximize the ability to insert keywords into a natural paragraph, but imagine if Matt said to you, hey, in 15 seconds, tell me what your company does. Well, you wouldn't just read off networking, routing, switching, and all facets of network security. You know, you would sit there and say something a little uh, farther. Like this one says certified SDBO. I would tell that person to get rid of it. You know, Joe, in this case, get rid of that line and use it for something else. But you want to tell Matt, hey, here's what we do in three big keywords at most. Like we do SharePoint development, SharePoint migration. And we've done it in the civilian side as well as DOD and some commercial customers. You know, you're, you're letting the buyer know right away, this is what we do. We've got experience and we've got experience in and out of um, the government, whatever. Um, everybody's at different levels. You might not have the same level of experience. So you got to get a little creative. Um, you're going to hear me talk about this at the end, but I have a course that's free and it's out there on the website. Um, you can actually get access to it in many ways, but it just, it goes through this process of how do I write a capability narrative? So um, you don't have to do it all by yourself. We've, we're providing you the guidance. This special equipment materials field, from my perspective, is a freebie field. I think it was generally thought of along the manufacturing or construction uh, type field. But in reality, it's a 1000 character field that's full text indexed. That means in this place, what I recommend people who do cybersecurity, for example, is to get a little more jargon going into here. So here you would write a capability narrative, but for the program office. Um, and again, in the course, you'll hear about that. So um, down here, you've got the uh, business type percentage. My uh, recommendation to everybody is always add in a component for research and development, 10%, 20%. In this case, you know, I would say add 20% R&D and 80% service. That way, if they search strictly on R&D, you're being found. But everybody out there can do R&D. If somebody comes and says, I want you to, to do research and development on what your expertise is, well, you're going to do it. I mean, you'd be happy to do it. Um, Next big one for me is the NAICS code. Um, inside of your capability statement, that paper you hand out to the government, you wanna tone down the number of NAICS codes you have so it's not overwhelming. But inside of um, DSBS, it's less distracting to the market researcher so you can use some more because although they should search on keyword, that's the best way to search, many search on NAICS codes and you wanna make sure you have the right NAICS codes for what you sell and again, you can look into the course and there's many people who will advise you on this, but you want to find uh, the NAICS codes that you think the government should use. And then you also want to find the NAICS codes that the government actually uses. Um, go look at a video I did on the Navy and the top NAICS codes they use. You'll notice some of the NAICS codes they awarded in 2018 were expired. 
And so, so it doesn't matter that they're expired from my perspective. That means I want to be paying attention to those. And so do you. So in here, I always recommend people aim for like 10. That's a good number um, to make sure you're really seeing how is my product or service being uh, procured. The next one is keywords. And this is the game, right? You, uh, you can't even be allowed to play if you don't have keywords in the DSBS world, right? Separate from you doing active stuff. Inside of the keywords, you can have 525 characters. There's 25 keywords and each one can be 50 characters each. For example, it says network security is the second keyword. The keywords are separated by commas. You want this field maxed. You want to know all the keywords you have in there, but like cybersecurity is a good example. Um, you want to write cybersecurity three different ways. First, you want to write it as one word, then you want to write it as hyphenated, and then you want to write it as two separate words because this tool is not smart enough to find all three of them, no matter what somebody types. But if somebody types in cybersecurity, even in the Navy, they do it multiple different ways. Even in a single presentation, I've seen them do it multiple ways. So um, that's a keyword that's so important to this profile. They want to make sure they've got those keywords in there uh, so that they can get found. Just moving my thing here. Okay, and then the last one, um, this export, I don't really focus too much on it. Um, and then the last one is the performance history. I've talked about this already. This guy has none and um, I'm gonna come in and talk to you, but you should always have something. Uh, my last company, the, the company I started and then closed quickly, when I created my profile, I went in and added um, some personal experience in there. I didn't, I didn't say I was, um, I had this contract or that contract or something. I used some personal 1099 experience. This is what you can do if you're very early in the game and you're just letting them know, yeah, I've got experience here as a subcontractor or you know, uh, 20 years doing this. Whatever it is, you just wanna put a couple of things in there so that it can show you've got experience and at least get you looked at. Um, that's kind of the big thing. So, um, so performance history is, uh, so uh, I'm going to start looking at some of these questions here, but um, a question here is, is experience the performance history where they ask for references. And um, yeah, it is where they ask for references and I never put references in. Um, I always put something in there like uh, available upon request. And here's why. If you put a name and a phone number in there, then your competitors have just found out exactly who to go ghost you on and try to get in there. But if all you say is Navy, and like I put in SharePoint migration 2010 to online or something, and then uh, Department of Navy or even Nav C, right? Then that's fine. Or if I even put Naval Surface Warfare Center, but I would never put Naval Surface Warfare Center crane here, right? If I reached out to Matt, I would tell him directly, but um, you know, you want to share the information. You absolutely want it in. A lot of people hesitate, um, but you want it in there. You just don't want to give your competitors direct access to your buyer. Uh, make them work a little bit harder. They can go to F FPDS and other places to find it. So um, I think that's the last page. Let me just close this really quick. Okay, so that was the last one. I'm gonna um, come off mute and this, is, this will be an interesting thing. Um, and I'm gonna ask for questions. And while I'm getting some questions, I'm gonna take a look at uh, the chatting to find the duns and go start pulling up your profiles. But I wanna get questions uh, that you might have. Before I do that, though, I, I want to remind you of um, our website. So this webinar is being brought to you by the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. Um, if you've been around a while, we used to be called the HubZone Chamber of Commerce, but now we've realized we're trying to help all small businesses. And so it's the GovCon Chamber of Commerce and um, uh, Matt Burkett out in uh, Crane, Indiana, um, the kind enough to co-host with us or co-bring this to you. And we really appreciate that. Um, so on the website, www.govconchamber.com, you log in, it's free, and you can get access to our library where you'll have access to this DSBS course. And it is a very intense, it's one of the most uh, uh, inclusive courses out there and it provides you a lot of tips. And so um, it's broken down into a series of videos, tells you how to do it and then how to research your competitors, how to look at the government. It's a, it's a phenomenal course. I wish I had it before, but I created it. So it's there for you and it's free for your use. Make sure you uh, take a look. It, 
it's as if you had uh, me or Matt there providing you guidance for hours. Um, and the last thing I just, before I jump to questions, just reminding you, um, you are all in uh, Indiana, most of you are in Indiana. Definitely reach out to, uh, to Matt and Crane and, and learn about what they're doing out there. There's opportunities, there's companies out there maybe you can meet and do subcontracting with, or if you're trying to do stuff outside of Indiana, maybe uh, Matt can give you a 15 minute call or something and chat with you about that and give you some guidance on maybe other areas in the Navy that would be better suited for what you sell. Whatever it is, uh, go take a look at um, the website and I've got it listed here and, and you can reach out to me if you're on the phone and I'll send it to you. So I'm gonna unmute, which will be a fun activity. So I'm gonna unmute and then mute everybody but allow you to come off mute. So hold on one second. So, it's, okay, so I'm gonna mute everybody. Okay, so all of you are muted at the moment. If you want to uh, ask a question, feel free to come off mute and, um, and ask the question. While you're doing that, I'm gonna look at the chat and start opening up some duns. And my favorite person is always the first person who talks after I'm done. So I, but it can't be Matt, it can't be Cecilia. You might have to come off mute and figure out how to come off mute there. Okay, I'll ask a question. There you go, thank you. So you, you mentioned you've had several companies. What led you to change the companies that you've changed? Um, my first company was a government contracting firm when I came out of the Army. I was working for the Pentagon, so it was a, uh, an easy transition for me. Um, oh, that wasn't it. Um, it was an easy transition for me. So um, I started a government contracting firm in IT space made a lot of money and then I decided I was just making cash but not doing much good and I wanted to so I sold my company started another company that was going to provide school supply kits to kids at the beginning of summer with exactly what the teachers wanted so the kids and the families didn't have to go shopping at Walmart they could just have it all at their house two weeks before uh, blah blah blah. long story short I dumped all my money in there and lost all my money um, I, I uh, had a goal of like making my first million by the time I was 30 and I didn't. And not long after that, I lost all my money. Um, but it was a, uh, it was a good play. The problem was it was right at the start of the dot-com bust, uh, when the dot-com bubble burst and I, uh, just in at the wrong time. Um, and then I did another kind of internet play. It just didn't work out as, uh, just bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that one. And then so my fourth company was back to GovCon. I'm like, let me go back to what I'm good at. And um, that one I did for 10 years and it was, uh, and it just worked out uh, really well. But I, I decided I, it, it again, wasn't um, what I was really wanting to do. Um, I was too much into the government's business and not into the things I wanted to do. And I, I tell you, Jim, I didn't realize this, how much I like doing what I'm doing. Um, I found that I have evolved over uh, reaching out and finding people like Matt who are willing to share information, learning from him, and then sharing it with what I describe uh, people from Guam to the U.S. Virgin Islands and every state in between. Um, I like to be a facilitator, so uh, trying to do that is a, is a big deal. Well, I appreciate you sharing. That's very helpful. Yeah, it was, um, it was funny. That last company I sold that was a government contracting, it, it infuriates me that I did not know then what I know now, right? It's um, this, something as simple as DSBS. Uh, and there's firms right now that uh, are the same way. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm on this mission, I think, for the next 10 years of, of really trying to improve the, the quality of small business success in federal contracting. And that goes with the process, so... Well, I have a question for you and maybe Matt is, as we look at the options that we can pursue, and I'll ask this maybe on behalf of others as well, is rather than worry about, you know, things that were very important two years ago or a year ago, how do we find out the things going forward that the government in Indiana wants to focus on? I mean, obviously there's the big muscle moves like hypersonics um, and some other you know, quantum computing, but you know, a lot of small organizations, they can help with that, 
but won't necessarily be able to translate those two big major congressionally funded initiatives into something that fits their portfolio. And I don't know if that may be an unfair question, but I thought I'd throw it out there because maybe others are interested in that question as well. Yeah, I, I think it's unfair, so I'll let Matt answer it. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. No, no, no. I, I got an answer for everything, but I, I, uh, if, if Matt, if you're able to come off mute. And, um, and he might be like uh, getting caught up there, but the uh, one thing I would uh, definitely say is um, it, like, it, oh, go ahead, is that Matt? Hey, you, yeah, you there? Yep. Hey, um, well, I mean, I guess there, there, there. You know, there are a couple, a couple of ways um, to do that, and I, and and one, I'll, I'll only speak for, I'll only speak for Crane, um, and I mean, every other year we host a, um, we host a conference called APBI Advanced Planning Brief for Industry, and we share sort of where we are now, and where we think we're going in the future. And, you know, I, I know you mentioned, you know, hypersonics and things of that nature, but it's also some of the smaller areas where a lot of the smaller firms can get involved. And we talk about those areas and we and we share that information publicly. Um, um, and I can maybe send it to Neil, but I mean, if you weren't able to attend APBI this last year, I mean, we made that that entire slide deck from the entire day talking to our chief strategists and contracting department and uh, crane leadership about where we're going, where we think the Navy's going and where we fit at, um, as crane into that, into that plan. Um, another way, another way would be, um, you know, FBO is a good, FBO is a good resource too, as far as, you know, go to FBO search N00164. That's cranes identifier. So I always say like a company has a cage code, we in 00164 uh, is called our our dodac but it's sort of like our our cage code and you can get an idea of you know what's the government buying um you know how often is crane buying you know this and you can start to see some trends um that way as far as again like like i said what we're buying how we're buying it how often we're buying it um but you know, we try to, as best we can, you know, we try to make that information available to where small businesses can start to position themselves um, um, to get in front of, you know, some of those future requirements that we might have or, you know, you know, some of those new and upcoming um, ventures that we might have. If that's, I hope that somewhat answered your question. Oh, it, it really does. Thank you so much because it's, you know, when you're looking at a lot of opportunities you want to focus on the ones that are going to be enduring and cut legs so that helps thank you mm -hmm. hey let me dive into um, a couple of quick reviews of this and i will just tell and we can uh, open it up for questions again when i load more um but i but i will say this uh one of my favorite things about reaching out to somebody like matt or anybody else is if you're going to call them and you're at a stage like jim was just at there opening it up saying exactly that like uh, hey, I'm a little confused on what you're buying or how I can research it. It makes, it puts um, Matt, in this case, I'm speaking for him, but it puts him in a position of knowing, okay, this person's trying to do some homework. Let me answer really quick. Compared to uh, calling in and being um, just seeming unprepared, that, that bothers the government a lot. It's like when we call and we don't know what people sell, but when you're calling and you're going, hey, I did my homework, but I'm confused about this it's a signal to them to switch gears mm -hmm. and, and be really cooperative. Okay. Tom, Tom from Genesis. Uh, I'm just going to go through this pretty fast. So uh, if you have questions, let me know as I, as I get to the end of your profile, but um, Tom, it's, it's been a little bit, so I would update this and I get the perfect update for you. Your website, excuse me, your website here, it does not have HTTPS. And so get that thing in there and update it so that it works. Um, sorry. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit for everybody uh, like that. Um, and so that's one update for you. Uh, Tom, update your GSA uh, credit card or that you accept credit cards. Um, legal structure is all fine. Let's get a principal in there. And these are all my recommendations. Take them or leave them. Um, but mostly I just say them as if to tell you to do them. Um, I'm going to look here first. You're, you're doing welding. 
right? It, it's something I'm seeing, radio f frequency welding. And so that makes me wonder whether you have any industry certifications that could be in here. I mean, let me move some of this. I might've got too small. Um, so you, people aren't going to be able to read this too, too much, but think about your uh, non-federal certifications and get those in if you have them. But I like this, like that's an industry certification, I think. Um, it's an ISO certified. So that would be a good one, for example, maybe mm -hmm. to put up there to just kind of pop it. Um, I like this, uh, I like this profile. Uh, you've done a, a medical, I'm just trying to hide all my stuff on the screen. Um, been mature nurturing innovation. I think this thing, I don't have any recommended changes. I'm not trying to go that far into helping you there. But here's my thing though. You didn't use enough words. So go ahead and use out the full 1000 words. Um, because part of it's about somebody reading it, but part of it is also about getting found. And then also think about going a little deeper into the technology if you can, and just take advantage of that special equipment section. Um, this part's good for your business type. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into the NAICS, but it looks like you got a good amount of NAICS that you've looked at it and they all look fairly related, which is good. Um, and the keywords though, not enough keywords. So go ahead and fill those keywords out, maximize the number and the, um, and the content. One thing I would recommend you do is figure out how to say what you say without using the same keywords. So you got welding, welding, and welding. Um, is there a way to say it, uh, you know, where it just pops up? Uh, once and then you have free space. Don't worry about changing it though until you max out your character count. Um, and that's it. And then you have experience. I don't see any experience there. And I know I'm scrolling, sorry here. Um, but it says here, we provide products for medical, military, and somebody. You have experience for three decades and none of it's there. Um, so that's a missed opportunity of, of just differentiating yourself. Um, I'm going to keep going. Come off mute if you got a question. And I'm going to move on to uh, Michael. Neil, I just wanted to say thank you. This is Jason from Genesis. I, uh, I was very thorough. I think you identified a few extra things that I had missed. Uh, the only real question I have is, uh, yes, we have experience, but all of our experience is very confidential experience. And so it's a little tricky. Like I can't say who I did the work for or exactly what the work was. So you have any suggestions on that tiptoe dance around some confidentiality? Yeah, absolutely. Because I've done work for um, intelligence community, the White House, other people. I mean, holy smokes, I had a contract with the White House that said I couldn't even market it at all. I'm like, come on. Um, so you got to go back and kind of get permission sometimes. But um, in your world, you can, you can write your suggested, the part you want to share and then get permission. So an example is you clearly are not going to be putting any contact information, but you can put the, um, at the very least, you can put in the type of work, let's say the work, it, just from my perspective, um, SharePoint migration from 2010 to 2013. There's the type of work. And, and, and by the way, this might be different than what uh, I can't show you here. Hold on. Okay. Does anybody have experience? <laughs> Come on. You guys are killing me. I'm looking. <laughs> oh my God. Five companies and nobody has experience. So I can't show you the fields, but one of the fields says, um, I think name and the other says contract. And a lot of people, put the official contract name and the official contract number. And, and I actually say, don't bother doing that. You know, until somebody comes along and tells me this is a bad idea. What I suggest you do is the name is the description of the work. So again, SharePoint migration or, you know, hospital construction. Um, so it's a, it's a really easy name for the market researcher to go, oh, that's what that is. Because remember, this is not your response past performance. This is just basically something to try to catch somebody's attention. Um, and then in the contract, uh, excuse me, yeah, in the contract, I don't put a contract number. I put in U.S. Navy or something. Okay. Uh, and I, so you can reach back to these customers yours and say, could I put that generic amount? Yeah, that's what my question was going to be. How, how generic is too generic? Because, you know, I think uh, for me, it would be something along the lines of, um, you know, a uh, five-year five year, uh, multi-year contract manufacturing contact contract for – prime supplying to U.S. Navy. Yeah, so uh, sometimes people put in that you're doing subcontract work, which is fine. That's a, that's a uh, like for example, in the contract, you can put U.S. Navy uh, and then parentheses subcontractor. Yeah. Uh, and the government doesn't dismiss us for subcontracting. Um, 
you know, they just evaluate us when they, right now it's just market research. And as they go farther forward in RFI or the RFP, they'll ask for more details on, yeah. on that past performance. But here, um, uh, you can be pretty generic. The part that you don't want to be generic on though is the type of work, because if you're trying to get work doing plastic film bonding, yep. then you want to sit there and say, um, plastic film bonding, you know, whatever. I don't even know how to use an example, but yep. you know what I'm saying. So you want to say that in, in many companies that do IC work, for example, might put in unnamed organization available upon request or something. Oh, uh, okay. No, I appreciate that. That's helpful. Okay, cool. Uh, and I'm glad. Uh, so, so here we go. Whoever this is, where am I going? This is Michael, but it might be somebody else. Um, for PSP seals. Um, so it's great that they updated it recently. That just looks good. Um, the phone numbers are fine. There is no website, but they do have a domain. Um, and so, you know, if you got a website, that sure should be in here. That is a pretty big subliminal flag. Um, you know, every individual will say something different, but in general, if there's no website, it just makes me move on. Um, market research is good. Uh, they've been around for 19 years. This company has a website, I'm assuming. Um, same thing, current principles. I really feel like this profile was filled out in 2000 and not really looked at, which is exactly what I did in uh, my last company. Um, and I could be wrong, but I mean, that's what I feel. So coming back, uh, Indiana do a lot of plastics out there. <laughs> um, here's another ISO one. That's a great one to put up here. Um, actually, for this company, I would wonder if you went after the ISO 2015 already, and this just hasn't been updated. Um, okay, an engineering driven stock uh, thing. This is a good paragraph, just says blah. Additional services include, so here it's basically services could be changed to additional keywords are blah, 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 blah. Um, it's hard to read additional services is just keywords sometimes. If there's a way to sit there and say an example of, you know, uh, we've done a large project for the Navy uh, that resulted in this, or you don't have to go in too much detail, right? But this idea, you're trying to capture attention of the reader that says, oh, these people are experienced. Um, all these additional things are, uh, could be put into keywords. Um, okay, specializes hydraulic, this is just additional stuff. This one here is pretty good where it talks about authorized uh, Parker seal. Um, so you, this company definitely probably has room for special equipment and material, uh, adding a lot more keywords related to whatever they're doing. Um, the only thing I would say about this, and this is the last time I'll say it for everybody, is you want this to be your in-laws who are reading this. Because uh, you know, as smart as Matt is or anybody else who's doing market researchers researching, they can't possibly be experts on uh, ship building, cybersecurity, road paving, and product placement or something. I don't know. So um, we want it to be a high, high enough level thing that they can read it. They can understand what we do. It relates to the keywords that we have. And, um, and, and theoretically, it's getting them to say, well, I want to learn more. You're not trying to <laughs> sell anything here. It's just, I want to learn more about this company. Um, you need business type updated. There is none. Put something in there. You need, yeah, again, I'm calling this correctly. They got one keyword. Let's get at least, at least five more. I bet you you could go up to 10 on here from what I think you're selling. And then your keywords are missing and you have no experience uh, listed. So let's go ahead and get that. Um, any questions from PSP? As I move on to the next one. And I, and I am recording this, so you can look at this a little later. Um, uh, I'm doing it fast too, so I can sit there and see if I can't get through as many as possible. Um, let me uh, pause one second, because Matt might need to jump off the phone because he's he might have a hard stop. I don't, and I can keep going for anybody who wants to stay on and keep having me look at your profile. But if I pop back over to my handy dandy slides, um, Matt, any last minute uh, words from Crane and how people can reach you? Uh, again, yeah, Neil, thank you. Um, I think the information you shared has been has been really good. Um, you know, and you know, hopefully the companies take it to heart. Um, my information's on the slide deck. Um, if you need to contact me, um, there's my email, my phone number. You can also, um, you know, find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can message me there. Um, but again, you know, thank you, thank you, businesses, for attending today, and and hopefully, um, 
this information has been helpful uh, to you. But thanks again, Neil, for hosting. Absolutely. Thank you for doing that as well, Matt. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to switch back over to um, the uh, profiles, and I'm looking at uh, CIRIM Research Corporation. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. Uh, looks good for the 25th. Um, your website looks fine. Um, here's a subliminal one I'll just mention. It doesn't have an S. Nowadays, most sites have an S. You might consider putting a, a secure certificate on your website, uh, but that's just a... Uh, an observation I'll say once for everybody. Coming down, same thing, no principles. Let's get current principles in there. So they, people like Matt, when they come in and research, they're like, oh, I'm getting to know that John person, or in this case, Greg person. Um, okay, so the rest of it's fine. Look at this, no capabilities uh, narrative. So I'm gonna skip everything else and jump down. Um, the keywords are very basic, right? So let's get, um, let's get some keywords in there. Uh, Okay, good. Um, let's get some keywords in here and the rest of it is pretty much what I said. Um, and I'm gonna move on, Greg or Srim, but if you have a question for me specifically, let me know. Um, TLS, yours looks good on recent. You don't have a website, but you do have a, a great domain name. So um, you've been around since 2004. I'm wondering if that's just an omission. If it is, let's get a website in there for uh, uh, Elizabeth or Jeff, Jeffrey. Um, by the way, here's something else I mentioned to people. This is not some formal document. So inside of your, any of these profiles, whether it's LinkedIn or, um, uh, or DSBS, if your name is, if you go by Jeff in the industry, put Jeff. Don't bother putting Jeffrey A. Like this is not a, a contractual uh, database. It's, it's just a point of contact, but it makes it easier for people to feel like they're reaching out to you in the right way. Um, in the way you prefer. So this is, uh, and same thing with Elizabeth, coming down, looking at your stuff. Okay, so your capability statement here, custom furniture, manufacturing, made in the USA, cut so. Okay, so, I mean, I kind of understand what this is. I would recommend you put a, a um, more involved narrative in there. You know, if somebody sits down and says, hey, tell me what you guys do, this is your answer. At a, um, at a cocktail party, you wouldn't just say healthcare, hospitality, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you get the point if you've been on this call for a little bit. So go ahead and do that. Industrial surge, um, woodworking. So these are keywords. Figure out how to write them into a sentence and, um, and get some service or our research and development here for business type. Um, this one's really cool. There's a lot of work within GSA and um, VA and others where this this company could be doing business and you might not be found because of certain basic things like not having a website or having a minimal capability narrative. Um, but if you took the time to do it, when the government's reaching out, they'll begin to find um, who you are. So, I mean, this stuff's good. Uh, this is good keywords. It looks like this person might've even tried to max it, but um, good stuff. And whenever you can take keywords integrated into what you're writing up above and make sure the keywords down here do not, um, are not found up here in this uh, area because um, the way the tool works, it'll find them all together. So you might as well not say a word twice and then no experience, but this company seems like they probably got a lot of experience. Oh, here's something else. If you really don't export, like this company has been around for, you know, five, 10 years or something. If you don't export, then don't, um, uh, then don't put in that you're export because uh, that's a distraction from the work. And I'm telling you right now, if you have not exported in the government side, federal government side, it is a, uh, a, a different approach than anything else you do and, and full of risk. You can do it, but it's a learning curve that, you, that there's no point in doing that. Um, let me pause there, come back. The last one here on, on this group is um, Dream Launch. So Dream Launch, looking good for the last time updated recently. See Phillips, WW, so Dream Launch, you need to get in your profile, um, uh, full website address, HTTPS. And then uh, recent company, welcome. G got your principles, this is great, coming down. Okay, so let's get a capability narrative in there. I'm sure you've been watching this and seeing it. 
Um, same thing, you got a lot of room to add some stuff in. Business percentage, I'm assuming looking at what you have here, training and schools, um, I would put in 80% service, 20% R&D. And then um, these you might wanna rethink. Oh, here you go. Um, consulting company, personal and professional development, resume review, cover letter, and public speaking. So um, uh, these are interesting things to, to watch. Um, and actually I'd be interested in hearing about what you do. So reach out to me on LinkedIn. But uh, these are great that you filled out the keywords. Now turn these into a narrative up here and tell a story about what you do. I know you might not have federal government experience, but let's go ahead and put in um, uh, some of the other stuff that you could have in there. Um, your experience, what drove you to becoming a government contractor. You probably have experience that could fit in there um, uh, as a story. And again, inside my course, you'll see me provide suggestions on how do you do just that. It's the same way I did that to get uh, more experience. Okay, so let me back this up. Any questions there, by the way, on Dream Launch? Um, not at this time, Neil, but I will um, inbox you on LinkedIn. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I'd love to learn more. Thank you. How did you uh, feel the webinar went for you, as long as you just answered there? <laughs> and I um, it was it was very, very informative. Um, I'm glad that I was able to sit in on it. So very informative. I'm definitely going in today and do those updates. Good, I'm glad. And by the way, for anybody still on, I would highly recommend you reach out to uh, Matt. Um, he's, you know, he, he's a he's a busy guy, but even even with all the people on, you'd be amazed how many people will not follow up. And if you follow up um, from this, it will make him feel, you know, good that he's hearing back from people. But you get a chance to learn about Crane and the Navy. Any of your questions, he he's a really uh, smart and generous person with that information. Will do. So I'm pulling up a couple of more. Tell me if you're uh, here. Um, Maurice, if you're here with Quest still, um, and I'll just say this for you, but it's for everybody. Make sure whenever you talk about your NAICS codes, I mean, excuse me, your DUNS, never use dashes because uh, in the government space, in the tools, we don't use dashes. Just a tip. And then, um, and I'm gonna ask in a minute, so I'm not going over people's profiles who aren't still on. Um, I'm gonna ask if, that you tell me that you're on when I go to show it, or I'll just move on to the next one, 896, 872. It's funny, I can't type and talk at the same time. I can multitask in different areas, but for some reason I, I start typing and my whole brain shuts off. Um, okay, and the last one is zero two three eight one zero one zero nine. I can talk when I type though, if I'm talking what I'm typing. All right, so uh, log 21, are you on? And you might have to unmute. Quest, are you on? Uh, BNL. Electronic Services, and William Glenn, Glenn uh, Complete Products. You guys might be on mute, so. Uh, let, so let me change this a little bit, because uh, I see, okay, BNL is on. Uh, are you not able to come off of mute? Um, let me find BNL. Here's BNL. I'll do them. I'll come back. Uh, updated recently. That's great. BNL. Um, you got a phone number is good, but uh, and you got an email address, which is good. HTTP. Everything's good so far. Um, I'm just talking out loud, but uh, you've been around since '84, so you've got uh, experience. Um, looking down here, let's get a principal in. If you want to build that uh, presence within the federal government, then branding around a person is also good. Uh, people like that. You don't have any of your legal structure. I would update that and get that stuff in there. It's just um, subliminal things that they would want to see. HubZone, 8A. Okay, capability narrative, you got to get one in there. And I think I don't want to rehash it too much because I've said it a lot with everybody else. But these fields, let's go ahead and get them 
filled out and you can go to the course and you'll see guidance that I, I provide going along. So let's take a look at the keywords. Uh, rental, so equipment rental, repair, repair, machinery. This is good, this is good Navy stuff, right? Uh, machinery alignment, discerning. So this is good. So these keywords are great keywords uh, to get you found. You don't have a capability narrative, which might be getting you, you know, kind of shortlisted. So turn what this is and what you're writing here into a uh, story. By the way, I didn't say this before, um, and, and people who are off aren't hearing this, but in your past performance, by the way, you only want to really do the last three years. If you don't have relevant last three years, then you can go ahead and put anything in um, that is experience and just leave the years off for the moment. Um, but this company here, BNL, you really seem like you have a lot of experience. So let's go ahead and uh, get that in there. Uh, so hold on. So that's uh, BNL. Uh, Jordan, let me know if you have a question on any of that, Jordan, but I think you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward there. Let me see. Quest is still on. What are you doing, Neil? Um, Quest. There's Quest safety products. Uh, updated recently. This is awesome. It's active. Um, Indianapolis. Great. Website's great. Um, 97, which is great. Everything's great, great, great. Um, coming down. Okay, so this one's a little confusing to me. It's a flag right away for me. You... Uh, you're a hub zone and you're an 8A. Uh, I'm assuming you're an 8A, but maybe not. Maybe it's just STB. But do you not have a GSA schedule? And if you do, put it in. If you don't, that's fine um, on that for, who is that, Nikki? Um, Nikki, just checking. Okay. Um, uh, and I was just mentioning that for people. If you have a GSA schedule, get it on. This is the first time I've seen somebody who looks like maybe they had it and it wasn't on. This is what I meant by federal government certifications that are not, I mean, excuse me, non-federal. Um, this is the exact example. Uh, some of these searches, and you can also find them a lot in the um, Army Corps of Engineers requires a lot of these type of things. Okay, so Quest manufactures and distributes safety, clean room, environmental, and abatement supplies. Very clear. Hub zones. Uh, so this last stuff is not really necessary. Um, we have successfully delivered these services in FDA, CDC, Navy, whatever, right? Having something like that would be really great. We've successfully have delivered this in the federal government, commercial and small and local or uh, local and state governments, whatever. A line like that could be helpful. Um, and then uh, maybe a showcase of uh, like a big project if you happen to have that. In particular, you know, we worked on this base cleanup or something. I, I don't know your business, so it's hard for me to come up with the example, but um, you don't need the hub zone stuff because if somebody's looking at a firm, they're going to know your hub zone right away. Um, they don't need your cage code because that's up above and they don't need this uh, small MBE because you've got it right there in the non-federal certifications. We manufacture our own personal protective apparel. This is a differentiator, right? It's a really interesting differentiator. Um, which I think is great, you might want to expand on that. What does that mean? Um, and then also compared to what? Is everybody else buying protective uh, apparel from out of country? Whatever it is, right? Um, that's something that's pretty cool as a differentiator. I'm not going to go too far into your NAICS, but it looks like you've, you've covered those. You don't have enough keywords, so please go ahead and get those in there. Um, but one thing to keep in mind, protective, safety, and glasses. Uh, safety. Oh, that's good. You have unique um, keywords pretty much. So that's good. Just add a lot more to those. Um, and who is this? this uh, sorry, this Nikki, right? Yes. Um, so it's good profile. Quality assurance standard. You got it in there. I would, uh, this one here. No, this is not us. I'm sorry. Um, and then your experience. I, I feel like you've got a lot of experience. I'm sure you got a lot of experience. So go ahead and get some of that stuff in there, Nikki. And um, and then you'll start having a rock in profile. And here's a tip for those of you who, have, who are hanging on to the end because I just come up with random tips, is one of my favorite things to do to be able to build a relationship with a new contact is let's say you're trying to get into um, uh, CDC. It's down in Atlanta and your first call and you're trying to figure out like how to do it and you want them to get to know who you are before you tell it all. Well, you could reach out and say, hey, I was following the tips about really making sure I have a good SBA profile, DSBS profile, 
do you mind if I send you a link to mine and you give me some feedback? Is it properly filled out to communicate to CDC um, what I sell in a way that CDC would receive? And what I'm trying to say to that CDC uh, uh, small business specialist or whoever is, I wanna sell to your buyers, but I wanna make sure how I'm communicating it resonates with your agency because all agencies are different. Um, and you know, some people will say yes and some won't. Some will say, sure, go ahead and send it to me. You know, and you can even say that before I send you my capability statement. Can I send you my link to my DSBS profile and you tell me if, if, it, um, if it looks good to you, you know, if you were doing market research. Do that after you fill this out and you'll get some additional feedback not just from a guy like me, but from actual you know, buyer representatives. It's a great way to get more information. Okay, so that's, uh, that was Nikki, that was Quest. I did b and Quest. Uh, oh, um, so, so I don't know if this question got answered, but I answered it anyways. Greg asked a question about where does the information on DSVS come from? And I apologize, I didn't uh, communicate that clearer. When you say you want to be a federal government contractor, you register in SAM.gov. That's one database and that's managed by um, GSA. And then part of that process, the very last page, it says, go fill out your SBA profile, kind of what you're looking at here on the screen. And SBA profiles managed by the Small Business Administration. Those two profiles make up your dynamic small business search profile. And um, so, the none of it is proactively pulled in. When you fill out SAM, you're putting in your Dunn's number. It pulls back the information that you gave to Dunn and Bradstreet. And then SAM asks you for basic information. From there, when you go into the SBA profile, into the DSBS pages, it has fields for you to fill out. So those two are where it happens. But the place it begins is SAM.gov. Just go into SAM.gov, log in, and answer all the questions on every single page. When you get to the last page, there'll be a button you push. The button will lead you to additional pages, and that's everything. I uh, hope that answered your question for Greg. Um, BNL, Nikki, I'm here. Glenn Williams, complete products. I think you're Glenn Williams. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and update your profile. And look at that. You've got a recent update it anyways because your website is missing the HTTP. Uh, let's go ahead and get that updated there. Um, and then coming from the top, it's active, which is great. Phone number, everything else looks great. Website, been around a while, which is great. Um, I'm just coming down fast because it all looks good. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Indiana, this stuff is good. This is really cool because it's showing um, kind of the breadth of, of where we can work based on some of these certifications or whatever. That's good. Um, okay. Full service promotional products company offering quality logo, merchandise, and apparel. Um, we believe that every gift should have special value. Possibilities are only limited by your imagination. So this is a salesy pitch. The first sentence is really good. I mean, all of it's really good. Just uh, the first sentence is appropriate to hear. Get rid of this line because that's part of your marketing flyer. And then, uh, even this one, what you're trying to say here is your narrative, right? So this stuff you're saying is more about, um, it's, you know, this. it's kind of the fluff to, to what you're saying and, it, and it's not necessarily uh, uh, bad, but um, actually even this one you could leave in, but get rid of the last one and then add more about what the capabilities actually are and where are you doing this? You've been doing this for a while. Have you helped any federal governments as, they, as they've done conferences? There's a lot of conferences that come up. The Navy has um, the Navy Gold Coast, right? This Navy Gold Coast event that's out there, they do badges, lanyards, et cetera. So, um, you know, being able to expand on that is really helpful with specific places you've done this. Um, it's great if you've done it at commercial events that you can name drop like, um, you know, uh, uh, South by Southwest or whatever. So go ahead and expand your capability narrative and your equipment. Percentage type, let's go ahead and get that. I think it's manufacturing. And yours, it's funny, yours might be 10% R&D, 20% service, and 70% uh, manufacturing. You'll figure that part out. Um, these are fine. You've, you're, you've clearly gone out and tried to find which NAICS are um, being used to buy what you sell. Uh, marketing. Um, 
So these ones, I, I'm not gonna count these really quick, but make sure you're filling this in. This Xerox toner though, just doesn't seem like what, one of the things you wanna do as a small business is focus on a core competency and once you're in, you sell everything else. And so if you're trying to say words and get found, you know, when you look at Xerox toner and I come back up and I say, I'm looking at, we're a full service promotional product company apparel or something. I go, Oh no, they do events. That's not who I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who can do, uh, you know, printers and things, you know, the skip on because you're, you're, it's not an IT servicing company. I would encourage you to think about doing a lot more keywords around apparel and material about the promotional aspect of what you do. That's a huge part of what the government needs to do is get the word out. And you could um, showcase yourself as that's our core competency. Looking down, look at this. Oh, I just pulled it up. Okay, so this is perfect. Um, so you have past performance, which is good. Let me take a look at it. You want to make sure it's in order. So bring the um, 2016 above 2015. And um, so here's the, here's, I'm just telling you how I see it from a marketing buyer's perspective. It looks like you were doing business back in 2015 and 2016, but 17, 18, and 19, you have not done work. I'm guessing that's not the case, right? So uh, go in, update this. And then the other thing is um, get rid of all these people's names and numbers because uh, you're giving direct access to your buyer, to these people, unless these people are in your company, which I doubt. Um, so go ahead and get them out and just put available upon request. Um, but the, you know, these other things are good. Uh, that's fine. Um, let me know if you have, uh, Glenn, if you have questions, let me know. So Glenn, Rehab for Life still on, done. Uh, did I pull up? Thanks, Jordan. Um, let me go back. So let me pull this one. Where's Rehab for Life? Eight, six, zero, seven, three, six. Let me go ahead and look at that. And while I'm looking at it, um, where does this information come from? Thank you, everybody. Complete product here, Jordan. So where can we go to see what you were searching? I want to look at what my profile looks like later. How do I get there? Oh, um, so Jordan's question is, uh-oh, what did I miss? Eight six zero one six eight. Jordan's question is, um, how do I get access to these profiles and everything else to look at it? Um, come into, uh, the, the URL is dsbs.sba.gov, you know, or you can look at Cecilia provided the link there as well. Um, but dsbs.sba.gov. Okay, Jan, if, uh, did I get it right? Rehab for life, Jan, hi Jan. Um, okay, so good profile, recent dates, coming down, your website. This one's um, interesting. I would always do consistency on your URL and your website. Um, so go ahead and put www there just for consistency. Um, and then Jan, 2000 year, this all looks good. Um, so now I'm coming down, woman owned small business. There's woman owned principal. Um, no certifications there. Canine, oh, this is interesting. So uh, PT and canine aqu aquatic, aquatic, oh my gosh. I need to go eat lunch. Can't say words. Um, okay, so I think you were seeing, Jan, that the capability narrative is not enough, but I bet you you got a really good story. So um, who do you support? Uh, to, to, to the canine, I'd be curious on whether you support um, uh, uh, DOD service members that are canines, you know, coming back, et cetera, right? Like that, those are stories that could fit in here about, you know, we support these type of people, law enforcement, whatever it is. Um, but let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, this capability narrative needs to be something where people go, wow, that it's a cocktail hour description of what you do, you know, that elevator pitch. And then if they want to know more, then you dig into um, the special equipment for you could be some of the approach like therapeutic. So we, um, uh, 
large outpatient land. This is really interesting stuff, but you know, where you could go into some of the tools of our trade are this, um, and I don't want to get into describing it too much. Service uh, research and development should be 20% for you at least, because I'm sure there's a lot that the government is constantly trying to learn that they might be willing to pay you for that. Um, wow, there's so many areas that you could be helping in the government. Uh, physical and occupational therapy. Okay, so you got the keyword twice. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then um, fitness. And by the way, don't bother using words and that just uses up characters you don't need. Canine aqu aquatic, thank you, I finally got it right. Uh, canine aquatic therapy, I think you have it up here. If I, we have aquatic therapy, here it is, canine. So don't use it in both places, Jan, because um, uh, the keyword's already there, so you're being found. So take advantage of, of, of those characters to describe something else, use other keywords, et cetera. And then where's your experience? I'm assuming what I see, 2007, you've got experience. So go ahead and put a story in there that, that helps them um, figure that out. And I know I went through there fast, Jan. Any questions if you're still on? Um, for the remaining people who are still on, any questions? Anybody I missed that you want me to uh, help with? And, and because there's so few people, I'm just gonna unmute all. Um, so if you've been talking on mute, just know that I've unmuted you. Can I call you back like in a half hour or so? So um, I'm about wrapped up. I, I'm going to look at chat one more time, but I think we're good. Jan, you're welcome. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Uh, Thank any last minute questions Thanks for anyone? Okay, I just muted everybody again for a second, but I think we're done. Um, I hope you got value out of this. Please let me know if you need anything else. And do me a favor, I know I'm saying this when the least amount of people are on the call, but you know, if you, if you liked what you saw and appreciate it, if you could let Matt know at Crane, because I would really like to repeat this at every one of the states out there. And um, Matt giving us a recommendation to other bases is great. We do this for free but it's really rewarding for us to be able to help so many small businesses move forward a little bit. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting. I, I think we're good to go. Um, thanks, Jacqueline. Appreciate that. I, uh, let me know on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn, but let me know if you have any questions.